As founder of Holden Advisors, uh, you spend a lot of time working with companies, helping them with their pricing decisions. Uh, what would you say are some of the key pricing issues that companies are facing today? Uh, good question. The, I, I actually see two different directions. Uh, the first is that there is an amazing array of technology available to pricing managers and senior managers so you can begin to manage your discounting behaviors better and manage your price sensitivity in your markets. At the other side of that extreme, you have customers that are getting very sophisticated in employing tactics to get suppliers to lower their price. So what's happening is you've got this technology on one side, yet you have massive amounts of discounting on the other side, and the biggest challenge that a pricing manager faces is how do you rationalize that? How should companies deal with the increasing levels of pricing pressure that they are facing today? The, um, uh, there are a, a number. First of all, uh, uh, the first step we recommend is, uh, is to just to take a look at your discounting behaviors. Unfortunately, price discounting has been become the crack cocaine of choice for most senior managers. And it's the, the, in being the drug of choice, it's something they keep using and don't know how to get away from doing it. So the recommendation, first of all, is to recognize what you're doing, see where you're doing it that you don't need to be doing it, and begin to draw a line in the sand. Um, there are some customers that are getting discounts in most companies today that should not be getting discounts. If managers can agree on who those customers are, and where to draw the line in the sand, you start a process of firing your, your bad customers. Uh, unfortunately, most companies that sell to a broad range of customers um, earn roughly 225% of their profits on 20% of their customers, which means the rest of them are either profit neutral or they're losing a lot of money on them. So companies are, that are able to draw a line in the sand, stop the discounting habit, are able to move to greater levels of profitability. The second thing to do is to have uh, understand how the things that you do as an organization, be they products or services, provide value for customers. Um, the term we use is you go on a value hunt. You go in and talk to your people internally, you talk to your customers externally, find out why they like doing business with you, and um, the, the, the trick here is not to go talk to purchasing agents because the purchasing agents know how to play poker and get lower prices. So you've got to talk to the real users, you've got to talk to the influencers, you've got to talk to the specifiers, you've got to talk to the senior managers and develop an understanding of how and where you provide value. And that understanding gives you the ability of determining what the appropriate pricing strategy is. The pricing strategy needs to reflect the value, the competitive conditions, and the customer conditions. Do you think that some of the problems that companies are facing today are resulting from a lack of leadership in marketing? Um, you know, as, as senior leaders in organizations, those people are responsible for the survival of the company. And uh, they often think about the, the need to meet their quarterly numbers. And if they haven't met their quarterly numbers, unfortunately price is the first trigger they, they pull to get them. And uh, then they wonder why customers begin holding their orders until the end of the quarter. And it's because they know what's happening and know they're going to get lower prices. We, we, by the way, call that desperation pricing. And one of the tricks is to get senior leadership to kick the discounting habit, so to speak. You talked about the 80-20 rule, that is 80% of the revenues coming from 20% of the customers or a distribution, something like that. Uh, how would you suggest that companies deal with those major customers? Well, first of all, is, um, is, is you've got to recognize that you can't change their behaviors. Customers understand how to play poker. They play it extremely well, and you've got to recognize that you've got to learn to play poker as well. Understanding your value is the equivalent of looking inside the poker player's hand. Then you've got to learn to execute on those insights so you negotiate better with customers. That means you've got to train your salespeople about the value. You've got to give them a, a, a effective value propositions to use when they're negotiating with customers. And the most important thing is to come up with what we call a flanking product defense. And the flanking product says that when a customer asks for a lower price, you give it to them, but you take some of the value away and have the lower value, lower price product. In most cases, customers are going to respond to that by saying, we want to pay, we want the higher value product and we're willing to pay for it. And it's the way of playing poker. The third thing that they've got to do is, is get senior managers to support that process. Do you think there's a problem here uh, regarding the way that salespeople are paid? Yes, that's a big piece of it. Salespeople in most organizations are compensated based on volume. 
if they discount prices, they still get compensated, even if the company is losing money. It's exactly the wrong incentive. So uh, what do you suggest? It should be a profit-based compensation system where if the profit goes away, compensation goes away as well. Not down to 1% or a half a percent, but down to zero. At some point, salespeople should not get compensated for selling products that are costing the company money. Most major organizations, it's my observation that there's a great deal of expertise in the area of product development, product management, in advertising, distribution man management, sales force, and so forth. But in general, there's not that same degree of expertise in the pricing area. Could you comment on that observation? Well, successful companies actually build a pricing department. Uh, they have a vice president of pricing. They support that individual with technology, with people, and with training. And those people are given the opportunity to set strong policies and procedures for the companies to uh, set prices. The leading edge companies do extremely well with this. The vice president of pricing reports directly to the president of the CEO, and the president of the CEO, rather than managing pricing, lets the pricing department manage pricing, and the president of the CEO manages the value of the organization to make sure that salespeople and other managers have confidence in the pricing. Companies that are unsuccessful in that process tend to hamstring the pricing department, have them report to a sales department, and the sales department, being compensated based on volume, ends up giving away all the profitability. Does that mean that if you've got a pricing VP reporting to the COO, that in fact you've got a parallel organization to the marketing organization? Yes, it is a parallel organization. One of the things we found is that marketing has a lot of agendas. Pricing is not necessarily the best one because pricing is a highly quantitative, financially oriented, as well as sales oriented exercise in the organization. Pricing managers need to understand the balance between the need to sell a piece of business and the need to capture the value. It's very difficult for a marketing manager who has a very different series of agendas to understand that difference and make that trade-off. How difficult a transition is it from what we one might term a classic marketing organization to the sort of organization that you're talking about? It's a very difficult transition. In fact, our recommendation to companies to make that transition is they've got to learn to walk before they can run. The mistake a lot of organizations make is they get bit by the value bug they try to employ a highly sophisticated value-based approach and it fails uh, when they don't make their numbers the first quarter. What we recommend is that companies maintain the way they currently price and just try to do a better job of it. If the pricing function is in marketing, try to understand where and how to leverage the value. If it's in finance, try to do the same thing. And, and the one thing we do recommend is you don't have pricing as part of the sales function. And as they evolve the organization, as, pe as, as the pricing function gets better, gets smarter, has more information, then they can begin having a wider range of managers who drive a lot more of the success in terms of profitability and growth of the organization. Uh, the organizations that we see that have outstanding pricing departments have been doing it for 20 or 30 years. In those pricing departments, what are the measures for those pricing managers? Profitability. And by profitability, uh, what I'm talking about is uh, contribution dollars. Uh, the best pricing department should be managed on contribution dollars that fund the capital costs of the organization. That way they can make the appropriate pricing trade-offs. There are sometimes you can increase the flow of contribution dollars by reducing price. Sometimes you have to increase price. And it takes a fairly sophisticated manager to understand how to do that. But that should be the ultimate measure.